Electricity is a vital source of energy used daily by millions of Australian households, institutions and businesses. While the Australian electricity network is one of the safest and most reliable in the world, it is not without its dangers in emergency situations. Awareness of the potential hazards posed by electricity can mean the difference between life and death. This DVD has been produced to provide emergency services personnel with a level of awareness about the dangers electricity may create, allowing you and your colleagues to get on with saving the lives of others without putting your own at risk. Overhead power lines are such a part of our urban and rural landscapes that we often take them for granted. While most members of the public are aware of the possible dangers posed by overhead power lines, clear thinking in times of crisis is rare. During emergencies, power lines can be a major hazard. They can also be deadly. Can you hear me, Mr Police? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I think okay. so. No, stay in the car for me. The power lines are down. If you get out, it looks like you might get hurt, okay? So you've oh. got to stay in until we get the power turned off. All right. Okay. Yeah, radio, I've got one vehicle into a power pole. I've got two persons injured. Confirmed trapped. I need ambos, rescue and firefighters as well. Report all incidents where power lines are down to your communication centre, providing as many details of your location as possible. This will help electricity personnel isolate the problem area more quickly. Your communication centre will contact the local electricity authority and their relevant support teams. Always assume power lines are live until proven de-energised by the local electricity authority. Keep at least 8 metres away from damaged or fallen power lines and any object they have made contact with. Extra caution should be taken if conditions are wet and windy. In this instance, the power lines are live and an electrical current flowing through the car to the earth has created an invisible radiating electrical field in the ground, outwards from the car. Anyone attempting to exit the car or approach the vehicle to commence a rescue is at risk of receiving an electrical shock. Keeping well clear, undertake a risk assessment of the area to ensure no other electrical hazards are present, such as overturned or damaged pad mount substations, kiosks, pillar boxes or underground supplied street light pillars. Keep vehicles, personnel and members of the public a safe distance from fallen lines. Guys, just keep and maintain eight metres at all times, thanks. Also, be aware of fallen power lines which may recoil. The local electricity authority is responsible for making the area safe. They will advise you what action is required in this type of situation and when rescue can commence. All road crews have mobile phones and two-way radios making them capable of immediate response in emergency situations. Power lines must be isolated before it is safe to approach the vehicle or remove injured occupants. After power is isolated, testing and earthing is carried out to ensure lines are dead. Further tests must be conducted at the accident scene. The all clear must be given by the electricity authority before the rescue can proceed. Alright guys, you're safe to move in, the lines have been turned off. Don't endanger your life if power lines are down or electricity is involved. Always assume power lines are live. Contact your communication centre in electrical emergencies and stress the urgency of the situation. Give your exact location and request electricity personnel to attend. Keep the area clear and stay at least 8 metres away from fallen power lines or anything in contact with them. Undertake a hazard and risk assessment to ensure that no other electrical hazards are present. Wait for the OK from the Electricity Authority before attempting rescue. Fire is a major cause of damage to land, property and power lines. Fire is also a conductor of electricity. Being aware of the dangers posed by overhead power lines during a fire can mean the difference between life and death, especially in emergency situations. As a result of this fire, power lines were damaged. Luckily, no one was hurt when they fell. As fallen power lines can electrify vehicles, 
posing another serious danger to emergency crews and members of the public, it's just one more reason why it's essential to always undertake a hazard and risk assessment of an area before commencing emergency procedures. Never park vehicles under or close to power lines and keep hydraulic equipment well clear of overhead power lines as per relevant exclusion zones. Other electrical hazards can also occur as a result of fire. Mains explosions can occur if power is not isolated. Explosion at the point of electrical attachment is also a risk if power is not disconnected. Electricity supply can be turned off at the main switch. In some buildings, there could be more than one main switch. Turning off the main switch does not isolate the power as the conductors are still live between the point of attachment and the switchboard. Explosion or electric shock can still occur even if the main switch has been turned off. If you are unable to gain access to the main switchboard, notify the local electricity authority through your communications centre and they will arrange to have supply disconnected. In these types of emergency situations, turn off the main switch. Be aware that there could be more than one main switch. Proceed with caution as explosion or electric shock can still occur even if the main switch has been turned off. Also, be aware of illegal wiring that may not be controlled by a main switch. Extreme weather conditions can also create electrical hazards for emergency personnel. Overhead electricity networks are especially hazardous during bushfires. High and low voltage power lines are located in rural areas and bushland. In your pre-fire incident plans, highlight fire trails that have overhead power lines crossing or near them. Power lines can sag dramatically due to the heat of bushfires. Be on the lookout for low clearances caused by sagging lines. One sagging line in a group is a sure sign a power line has been broken. If a sagging line is seen, warn personnel of the danger before commencing firefighting efforts. When fighting fires, also look out for fallen lines and allow for reduced visibility. Hey, woo, mate. We've got power lines on the ground here. Always assume fallen power lines are live. Don't attempt to move a fallen power line. Keep all personnel at least eight metres clear and find another route to reach the fire. Watch out for power lines out. Hey, good call. Pipe, mate. Pipe. Firecom, Firecom, Parkspawn Captain. Parkspawn Captain, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we've arrived on scene, but we're unable to access the property. Uh, there's power lines down across the fence. Can you uh, pass on to the electricity people that that needs expediting, please? Fences and water pipes can also be hazardous during bushfires. Power lines in contact with wire fences can energise a fence for several kilometres. Severe flames and dense smoke can also cause high voltage power lines to arc to earth, resulting in a plasma burst and a loud explosion. Avoid working near high voltage power lines if fire conditions are heavy or creating volumes of smoke. And when fighting bushfires, always assume that power lines are live. Be on the lookout for sagging or fallen lines. Keep personnel well clear of fallen lines by at least eight metres and find another route to reach the fire. Be aware that fallen power lines may recoil. Avoid touching fences and water pipes during bushfires. Avoid working near high voltage lines in heavy fire conditions. Wooden poles and cross arms can also catch fire. Fire can weaken the structure, causing the lines to fall. Never stand or park vehicles beneath power lines. Use vehicle mounted pumps and pulse the hose above the pole, allowing overspray to fall on the fire. Never stand in pools of water and never apply a direct jet of water onto a cross arm or insulator. Use a nozzle that breaks the stream of water by at least 50%. Stand on the outside of the power lines at least eight metres away from the base of the pole. Although constructed according to strict fire safety regulations, substation control buildings can also catch on fire. 
a substation fire can involve equipment energised to high voltage levels and toxic fumes can be given off by burning insulation material. After reporting the incident to your communications centre, wait for the local electricity authority to arrive to isolate electricity supply to the substation. Entry should not be attempted until the power has been isolated and the OK has been given. Repairing damage from storms, gale force winds or hail is often the role of emergency service personnel. Falling trees, branches and flying debris can damage electrical equipment and bring down live power lines. Have your communication centre contact the local electricity authority to isolate supply and give the all clear before moving storm debris from around power lines. If live wires are on the ground, keep onlookers and personnel well clear. When emergency roof repair is required, be on the lookout for electrical hazards. Take particular care with metal roofs, guttering and ladders, all excellent conductors of electricity. Keep personnel and onlookers well clear by at least eight metres. Wait for the power to be isolated and to be given the OK from electricity personnel before commencing cleanup. When cleaning up after storms, never touch power lines or power attachments. And be aware of the hazards solar arrays can create. A solar panel will always generate electricity during daylight hours. There is no turning it off. Keep in mind that broken panels can release energy and remember that wires that have been cut or damaged during a nighttime operation will become energised during daylight. During floods, rescues are often carried out under difficult conditions. Heavy rain and flood waters can cause serious damage to electrical systems. Take care with aluminium rescue boats and keep equipment and personnel well away from power lines. Lower aerials when in flood waters and remember that clearance between power lines and the water is reduced as flood waters continue to rise. In snow country, clearances underneath power lines can similarly be affected by heavy snowfall and snow drifts. The railway system is another area where electricity can be hazardous during normal operations and emergencies. If called to attend an emergency within the rail corridor, the 1500 volt railway traction overhead wiring should be treated the same as other electrical wires and assumed to be live. Contact your control centre, which will in turn contact the railway electrical operating centre. This centre will arrange for staff to attend the scene, isolate the power and issue the relevant permits before rescue can proceed. Unless you hold the Rail Industry Safety Induction RISI qualification, you must be accompanied by the appropriate railway authorised personnel to enter the rail corridor. All personnel and onlookers should be kept well back and passengers should be told to remain inside the carriages until the all clear has been given. Personnel should also keep a sharp lookout for trains as they may still be operating on adjacent lines. In extreme or life-threatening situations, the railways have a special procedure called a rescue power outage that can be introduced if you are required to urgently rescue members of the public. In this circumstance, advise your control centre that the situation is life-threatening and priority arrangement will be made to remove all sources of power to the overhead wiring. Your control centre will advise when this has been done to enable you to access the injured persons. Do not proceed until you have received this assurance from your control centre. Electricity networks rely on substations to distribute supply. Zone substation switchyards contain high voltage equipment and are located throughout rural and suburban communities. Switchyards, sometimes prone to vandalism or unauthorised entry by people, should never be entered, whatever the reason. Boys, stop right there. It's the police. 
You're not in any trouble, but you're in a lot of danger. Sit down on the ground for us. Just take a seat. Don't worry about the ball. Sit on the ground. Contact your control centre immediately to report unauthorised entry into a switchyard. We've got two young persons on the premises. Can you contact Energy Authority? Thanks to sister stand here. Never put your own life at risk by attempting to enter. Keep the intruder in the same spot and away from all electrical equipment. Wait for the electricity authority to arrive with access keys to open the compound and assist the persons to safety. Just coming down along this gate here. Just come straight out, okay? There are many other types of equipment that carry or conduct electricity which can be hazardous. This is particularly the case in vehicle accidents where cars have veered off the road. Equipment used to distribute both high and low voltages are located in every suburb. When attending accident scenes, undertake a hazard and risk assessment of the area to ensure no other electrical hazards are present. The sad reality of emergency situations is that no matter how hard we try, lives can be lost. Under no circumstances go to the assistance of anyone who has received an electric shock, even if the lines look dead. Secondary deaths can occur in an attempt to help an earlier victim. While a situation like this is extremely difficult, it is vital to keep at least eight metres clear until the power has been switched off and the all clear has been given. The aim of this DVD has been to provide emergency service personnel with a level of awareness about potential electrical hazards which can be encountered in emergency situations. Remember, every situation is different and this DVD is only a guide to some of the possibilities. Recognising the dangers of electricity in emergency situations could save your life or the lives of others. For more information on electrical safety, contact your local electricity authority.